Today I am outside of James Street Station in Liverpool. Yes, inspired by Jeff Marshall, it's about time for Secrets of the Mersey Rail. Mersey Rail is a rapid transit rail network largely serving Merseyside and small parts of Cheshire and Lancashire. The network primarily consists of electrified former steam railways, the first of these being the Mersey Railway, which ran from James Street and underneath the River Mersey to Hamilton Square, Birkenhead Central and Green Lane. Further extensions were made to Birkenhead Park, Rock Ferry and Liverpool Central in the late 1880s, and the railway was electrified in 1903. Following this, a small section of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway, from Southport and Ormskirk to Liverpool Exchange, was electrified in 1906. The next line to be electrified was the Rural Railway, on its new Brighton and West Kirby branches in 1937, which linked up at Birkenhead Park to the Mersey Railway. Then, 1977, in a project dubbed the Loop and Link, saw Liverpool Exchange closed and replaced with Moorfields, which was then linked to Liverpool Central via a new tunnel. There was also a new underground loop constructed beneath the city centre. It was from here that the network was officially dubbed as Mersey Rail, consisting of the Northern and Wirral lines. Extensions to the network from this point include an extension to Kirby in 1978, Liverpool Central to Garston and later Hunts Cross in 1983, Rock Ferry to Hooton in 1985, and then finally Hooton to Chester and Ellesmere Port in 1993 and 1994 respectively. There have since been some new stations added too to the network, but as of yet, this is how the lines stand today. I should also add that there is the City Line, however this is really just a term for all services that terminate at Liverpool Lime Street, and not an official part of Mersey Rail, so we will not be including it in this video. Anyway, back to James Street. Now if you fancied you wanted a bit of exercise when leaving this station, you can come up the Water Street exit, which also as an added bonus does have some nice vintage posters on the walls, so that's pretty nice. However, I really would not recommend coming up here, take the lifts. It takes the energy out of you. <laughs> a neat little added bonus of the Water Street entrance is the fact that it comes out next to Drury Lane. Not the famous one though, I'm afraid. Heading back down into the station now, where you can observe the disused platform too, which also shows off the fact that this station, along with Hamilton Square, is the oldest deep level station in the world. Heading underneath the Mersey now, our next stop is Hamilton Square, where you can observe the huge, iconic, Hamilton Square Station Tower. There's even some old Mersey Railway signage still on it. And on that topic, head one stop to Birkenhead Central, walk through the beautifully decorated passageway, and look at the building from the outside. The quickest route to Liverpool. And also at Birkenhead Central you can see the original traction maintenance depot, which has been disused since 1997. Back on the train now, headed towards our next stop. I'm now here at Little Sutton, and you might notice that the station is looking a bit empty. And that is because Little Sutton is the least used station on the Mersey Rail as of this video. Something I do like about this station though is the fact that there's a lot of artwork and a poem written by the local beavers and cubs. Heading back up now, and after a read of the good old Metro newspaper, it was time to go to Rock Ferry. Where there is a set of two platforms and two tracks, which are currently not used for main passenger service, with the exception of a couple of times in the morning. These tracks are where the trains used to terminate, however that was no longer the case following the line's extension from Rock Ferry to Hooton. Also at Rock Ferry, take a peek over the fence at the former platforms 5 and 6, along with some slightly crumbled station art, and even where an old staircase used to be. Carrying on the journey upwards, our next stop is Birkenhead Park, which is home to yet another abandoned platform and a disused lift shaft. Also, turn right when heading out of the station, and you will end up at the actual Birkenhead Park, which amazingly was part of the inspiration for Central Park in New York City. It's certainly quieter though. Back onto the railways now, heading towards New Brighton. Make sure to look out of the window when passing the Birkenhead North Depot, as you just might be able to get a glimpse of the repurposed London Underground D-Stock trains, which are now used by Transport for Wales. Now something you're probably asking is, what is the shortest journey on the network? Well that would be James Street to Moorfields, which takes a total of... 1 minute and 1 second. Another little fun thing you can do is if you come to the end of the platform at Moorfields, and listen down the tunnel carefully, you can actually hear the trains leaving James Street before they arrive here. 
which is pretty cool. And while you're at Moorfields, come out onto the street where you'll be able to see the facade of the original Liverpool Exchange station. A slight quirk about Moorfields is despite the fact it is an underground station, you still need to go up an escalator to reach the booking hall. Next up is Lime Street, which firstly has an escalator which has been converted into a staircase. There is also one of these at Hamilton Square. To enter the station normally, you need to go down escalators, through a hall, through ticket barriers, and down more escalators. However, there is a much more direct way. There is a lift hidden off to the side down a corridor between WH Smith and Boots in the main Lime Street station. This lift leads directly down to the platform level. We are now on our way to Kirby, and on the way, make sure to look out to the right between Moorfields and Sandhills to see the old viaducts that used to house track that led to Liverpool Exchange. So the service has terminated at Kirby now, however that soon will not be the case, as a new station known as Headbolt Lane is opening up next year in 2023, which will continue the line and terminate there instead. Kirby will soon no longer be a terminus. Leaving Kirby now, our next stop is Rice Lane. So let's say hypothetically you were extremely short on time and you wanted to save, if possible, even just a couple of minutes on your journey. And also you happen to be travelling between the Ormskirk and Kirby lines. Well, one thing you can do is instead of going to Kirkdale and changing lines, you can get off for either Rice Lane or Walton, and the stations are only a two minute walk down the road from each other. <laughs> oh, I just missed it. Oh, that would have been great timing for the video if I'd actually made that. <laughs> and since we're now on the Ormskirk branch, let's head to Mugull North. So this is Mugull North Station, the most recently opened station on the Merseyrail network, opened in 2017. However, once again, that title is soon to be taken by Headbolt Lane next year. There is also a time capsule buried under the soil here, right outside of the ticket office. Time to head south, but first, a quick pit stop at Kirkdale. Behind me is the Kirkdale Depot, which houses several of the new Class 777 trains due to be introduced later this year. And that does mean that yes, unfortunately, the current 507s and 508s do not have long left. So if you want a chance to see them, do it now while you still have the chance. Now that we are heading south, look out to the left between Liverpool Central and Brunswick to get a glimpse of the abandoned St. James station, which closed in 1917. However, the station could be reopening in the not too distant future, under a new name, Liverpool Baltic, as was voted for by the local community. The name change is to prevent confusion with James Street. And on the topic of abandoned stations... Now I mentioned at the start of this video a Garston station, which today is now abandoned and demolished but you can still see some remnants over this bridge. The station was closed in 2006 after being replaced by Liverpool South Parkway. The original entrances to the station are here on Walton Road, here on Hartington Road, and here on Island Road. One more stop to go on this branch, and that would be Hunts Cross. I'm now here at Hunts Cross where Mersey Rail trains normally terminate, and you can see there are buffers over there. However, you can see, if you look down, that the line definitely did used to continue. And also, behind me, there is a disused platform. Time for our last few stations, these being on the Southport branch. A couple of stations have maintained their original railway signage, such as here for the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway outside of Formby, and here at Hillside, with signage for the London Midland and Scottish Railway. Our final stop today is Birkdale, which in my opinion has the most beautiful canopies of all of the stations on the network. The station also has a disused signal box next to the level crossing. And with that, it was time to head to the final stop on the line. And that takes us to Southport, which marks the end of our journey. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, this video was inspired by Jeff Marshall, so all credit goes to him for the idea. But yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one, goodbye.